if someone had told me this time last year that I would come to an event in Cape Town in December where there was no alcohol being served, I would have told them they were crazy. That just would not have interested me at all. But life is unpredictable, life is strange, and last May I decided that I would stop drinking completely. I've always been a heavy drinker. It's what we do in the UK, isn't it, Dougie? <laughs> it's cold, it's miserable, we drink. So the last 10 years or so, in fact ever since I met my sensible French husband here, I've been trying to cool it a bit, because he didn't really appreciate the, the Brits drinking their heads off, falling down. So I tried to cool it, and I tried everything. I tried all the different methods of moderation. I think my funniest one that still makes me smile is I said to Vincent, OK, we have no alcohol in the house, and then I can't drink. We'll only drink when we go out. But then I made him go out every night. <laughs> it's <was> exhausted. <laughs> So I really did try everything, but I couldn't. It's like the more I tried, the more I drank. And then I had to come to the horrible realization last May, after yet another kind of rock bottom, as we call it, that I would have to stop completely, that I was an all or nothing kind of person. And for me, you know, I'd had the all, and now it was time to look at the nothing. So obviously, it's easier said than done, if you've always been a heavy drinker, to stop. So uh, I looked around for some help. I found AA, I found rehab, and I also found this workshop. It was a workshop called How to Quit Drinking. It was a one-day workshop. It was in London, where I'm from. So I decided to check out this workshop. And it sounds like a cliche, but it, saved, it changed my life. Freudian slip might have saved it also. It changed my life uh, because it, it gave me a chance to reflect on why I was drinking so much. It gave me a chance to meet other people in the same boat. And I think most importantly, it gave me a chance to learn about some coping strategies. How could I live an alcohol-free life? Because to me, previously, that had been a complete mystery. One of the coping strategies that I uh, learned about was to write, you know, to, to journal your feelings. I love writing anyway, so I decided to give that a try and I started a blog. The day that I stopped drinking, I started <coughs> blogging and I called my blog World Without Wine. So it got quite a few followers and people commenting saying, oh, I know just how you feel and blah, blah, blah. So, so that was fun, and somehow this blog started evolving. By this time, by the way, I was sober. The blog was evolving, and I think the fact that I was blogging and I told so many people about this journey that I was on, I felt like I had to stay on it. You know, it was uh, an added incentive. I just couldn't embarrass myself totally by, by starting to drink again. So I stayed sober, I stayed blogging, the blog evolved into a website, and then the blog evolved into something else, which, uh, as Dougie mentioned, is now called a sober site. Now these are quite interesting. Uh, sober sites are popping up all over the world. There's two very good ones in the UK. One's been going for three years. There's one in Australia, one in New Zealand, uh, one in America, and those are just the ones that I, I know of. And what a sober site is, is it's just a website, but it's full of tips and tools and stories, recovery stories, which we all love. And it's, um, it's, about, it's for people that need to get and stay sober. And the, the objective of a sober site is to build a community, a, a supportive community. And that's really what we're trying to do at World Without Wine. World Without Wine is now South Africa's first sober site, and we do offer workshops and we offer recovery coaching. And of course we engage with our members via Facebook and via Twitter. So we're trying to build a community tonight is part of that effort. And now I'd like to talk about the Dry January Challenge. We're going to try and get as many people as we can to commit to being dry, to not taking any alcohol in January. And the way that will work is they'll send me a, a mail to Janet at worldwithoutwine.com saying uh, which dates they're going to be dry for. We've left the dates a little bit flexible because I realise that some people are on holiday till mid-January and they might like to start when they get back. But as long as you start in January then that's fine. 
So once you've registered, then uh, I will send out a daily email to you, and that email will be full of tips and ideas and encouragement to stay sober. So we hope that we'll get plenty of people signing up for that. So that's the first part of the challenge. Now the second part, or the catch, as someone uh, <laughs> described it to me the other day, the catch is that we're asking people to reflect on what they would have spent on alcohol during January. And we want them to donate that money, or at least part of it, to a good cause. Now the good cause that we've chosen to work with are the fabulous Earth Child. And I'm sure that lots of you know about them and the amazing work that they do.